Hello, welcome to the Friday, January 24, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today's Diary by Xavier has two interesting malware samples that distinguish themselves by their different approach they're taking to evade antivirus. First one is good old Emotet. Now, Emotet is pretty common, makes the headlines pretty much every day. So you would think that anti-malware pretty much has it down when it comes to detecting this malware family. Problem is, it keeps changing and anti-malware is still not flagging all word macros. Personally, I think they probably should do that, but uh, then they're like business people and such that may be a little bit opposed to that idea. And as a result, of course, they try to parse uh, the macros that are attached to the document. And in this case, the macro is heavily obfuscated. There is a ton of unnecessary code that's sort of just being added to essentially sort of flood and confuse the antivirus engine. And in this case, a couple major vendors missed it. And as Xavier states, this particular document made it all the way to the user in a reasonably well-protected network. So Emotet here pretty much does standard evasion, trying to not get detected as malicious. The other example, a little PowerShell script, takes a very different and in some ways simple approach. What it does is it actually doesn't try to evade antivirus. Instead, it's actually trying to get detected. It's just trying to get detected with the wrong signature. To accomplish this, the author did add the ACAR string at the beginning of the PowerShell script. ACAR is a standard string that's used to check if anti-malware is working correctly. And essentially what anti-malware does is it looks in the first few bytes of a document. If it finds that string, it just flags it as, yes, malicious, there is the ACAR string. So this way you can check that your antivirus actually does look at files. The problem here is that Every security analyst pretty much knows the ACAR test and is likely going to ignore any alert related to it. They figure, hey, there's just someone testing our defenses and sending in a document with the ACAR string. It's harmless and not causing any damage. So let me move on to the next alert. And because other signatures will not trigger, once this first signature triggered, this alert will be ignored. Really simple trick and in some ways of that uh, ideal mix of an exploit against a technology like anti-malware stopping to analyze the document after it got a hit. And of course, a social engineering style exploit by knowing that uh, analysts will typically ignore files that are flagged with the ACAR signature. And two of the vulnerabilities I told you not to overlook in Microsoft's patch Tuesday were CVE 2020-0609 and 0610. These two vulnerabilities are remote code execution vulnerabilities in the remote desktop gateway or short RD gateway. This is a tool that's often used at the perimeter to provide controlled access to RDP servers within the network. The vulnerability has also been dubbed Bluegate and there is a proof of concept exploit available now. This exploit was written by Oli Pohn. Oli Pohn also released one of the early, if not the first public exploit for the certificate issue that Microsoft fixed. So someone, I guess, who is starting to try to make a name for themselves. Lucky for us, this proof of concept exploit is not a full remote code execution exploit, but just a denial of service exploit. We'll have to see how close this is to a remote code execution exploit and if someone could possibly turn that into remote code execution. So it could follow the blue keep pattern here where we first had a denial of service exploit released and shortly after the first uh, remote code execution exploits popped up. 
And Citrix teamed up with FireEye to provide a free tool that you can use to check your Citrix ADC installation if it has been compromised using the recent vulnerability. And Citrix teamed up with FireEye to provide a free tool that you can use to check if your Citrix ADC device was compromised using the recent directory traversal exploit. Now, the tool comes with a necessary and important warning that this tool is not 100% accurate. It does look for essentially the standard locations where an attacker would leave files, maybe even looks for some common processes like these Python backdoors and such. But of course, it can't necessarily know every single variation of these exploits. So as usual, if this tool triggers that you are compromised, then double check, triple check the device and then still burn and rebuild it. Also, if this week you found a device in your network that was vulnerable and was exposed to the internet and this tool comes back as it being not infected, that would make me very actually even more because that may indicate that you have a more sophisticated attacker that took the device over and locked out some of the simpler exploit attempts. It looks like LastPass again managed to lock its users out of their passwords, at least partially by deleting their extension from the Chrome Web Store. Apparently this happened by accident and the result of course was that you could no longer use this extension, which you kind of need to access your passwords. The only alternative was to connect directly to LastPass and retrieve passwords via their web app. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.